Good evening and welcome to Collector Cars. I'm Lance, your host. <clears throat> well, I hope you all enjoyed our ladies' night last week. This week, we were going to have the ladies all on again, but I didn't think I could handle that two weeks in a row. Not being able to talk, see? So instead, I have Mr. Bill Trier. He... he what is... What is and, and Mr. Bill... Uh, no, go fish. Look at go, this. Go fish? Yeah. Okay, no somebody. Can, can no. somebody, Billy, can you call the ladies, please? Oh, hi, Get the ladies down here quickly, hey, what's as going quick on? as you can. <laughs> Anything going on? Well, we just want to. <laughs> hey, at least the ladies, you know, eventually let me into the conversation. <laughs> we don't want to do your bad hand. Bad hand. Yes. Oh, by the way, yeah. did I win anything? Nope. No, oh, I don't even, no. You know, you, you, I didn't you even get give a me, hand. You gave me a pair of twos, you know? Yeah, well, I knew what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> you knew what he was doing? <laughs> yeah. Um, this is our TV poker run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> TV version of the poker run. How you doing, Mr. Trier? Doing fine. We had you scheduled to do this for the folks a week or two ago, but you were a little under the weather, so, but we got you now. Well, I couldn't get past all the bars on the way up. That was Well, see, that was, that's the problem, see. But you know what? Tonight we're doing the evolution of the gas of the um, car dealerships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you, yeah. Hey, good evening and welcome to Collector Cars <laughs> TV. I'm Bill, your host. <laughs> Should we start again? Yeah. Hi, Bill. Just keep the cameras over here. And the next project <laughs> for the folks that they need to be watching for is when you do the rare, unusual, and some hilarious auto accessories of the past. There's they had one. some pretty unique attachments for your car. You know how the vacuums came with 92 attachments? <laughs> in, uh, back w in the day, the uh, cars came with all kinds of So ones. we're talking about something more ridiculous than a tissue holder then, right? That's right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> See, you, with you, the nasal thing, he, he thinks tissue, tissue holder. holder yeah, yeah. He needs one in, the, in his modern car. <laughs> <Yes, you know. laughs> I tell you, we did another four-show weekend. Uh, we did the Center of Hope. We did uh, Mel's in Venice, uh, which actually was a very nice evening. It was a little cloudy and stuff, but it was a nice evening. Then we went, down to, uh, we went up to uh, Hooters, uh, had an excellent turnout with Hooters and Strickland's. A lot of nice stuff up there. Again, a lot of new stuff. That 37, what yep. was it, 37? Chrysler. Chrysler. Oh. Chrysler Royal. Beautiful. You'd have loved it. You'd have been right in your glory. Those up with Hooters? Yeah. Yeah. Who's that car from? Ready for me? Um, I, think, I think the guy was from Longboat Key, and I, 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 yeah. I believe he just bought it not too long ago. So. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, very cool stuff. And uh, so anyway, we had a ball, and it was just a, another great weekend. This weekend, I got one show, so I may be able to get caught up on some of the tie-ups and loose ends on, you know, some of the stuff that's been hanging, you know. So are you ready, Mr. Trier, to We're educate to us and entertain us? We'll try. With um, the um, evolution of the car dealerships. Take it away, Bill. Well, you know, about... 115 years has gone by since the 1800s, late 1800s, and over 3,000 manufacturers of automobiles and trucks in the U.S. began business during those 115 years, and today only a handful have survived today. The car makers building examples of the three cars you see pictured here before the 20th century were scattered throughout the country, mostly in the Midwest, the Northeast, some in the South, and the Western states, and a sprinkling in some other states. The reason for this was buyers wanted to purchase cars near the plant near where they lived so they could get parts for their cars. Your choice of motors was steam electric, steam and electric, and also the gas engine, which was not, uh, un, which was not really proven yet. It was really experimental, so steam and electric were the popular cars. There were no dealers in these years, so you traveled by train to a large city auto show, and mostly affluent people could do this, to select your car, and then you were taught to drive it on a wood balcony like this, inside the track uh, above the main floor. This was in 1901. With this peek into the past, we see a bicycle dealer selling white steam cars in 1902. See the uh, rack for the bikes here behind the mm -hmm. steamer? 
but this was pretty common. Early dealerships began as village blacksmiths, harness makers, bicycle shops, and other stores. The cars were a sideline, as was the case with this bicycle shop that became Detroit's first auto agency in 1899. In 1904, the AF Chase Company sold the popular Oldsmobile and also flywheel engines that were used in factories and on farms. And if you look real close in that Red right dash. yeah, that right window, you can see one of those old flywheelers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in front of that's the, the, the curve dash old, yeah. yeah. Automobiles were usually shipped by train from the factories to the far reaching dealers. In a cost cutting move, this early 1904 photo depicts a caravan of brand new Buicks and they're lined up ready to leave Flint and they were going to be driven to the nearby dealers. <laughs> the 1909 auto shows were much more decorative and they included a larger selection of the various makes of automobiles and they were usually under very bright dazzling lights to show off those shiny paint jobs. In 1910, automobile owners were still primarily the wealthy and they garaged their cars upstairs over the dealer's showroom where they bought them and the dealer kept the vehicle maintained cleaned fueled and repaired and ready to use in a moment's notice now this upstairs hallway in a former 1910 auto dealership was originally the pathway to the various chauffeur's quarters that you see on the left they were small apartments and the chauffeurs were on call 24 hours and lived there, uh, and the owners had their cars garaged there also. Mm. This building housed the Detroit Auto Show in 1910, and this is a picture of it in 1910 as they were getting ready for that show. And this also had a test track to take the prospective customer on a test drive and teach them how to operate the car. You gotta remember that most people were still driving horses and carriages. Inside the building, it's apparent that the auto shows were still decorative and the displays more spacious. Again, the pitch was to the wealthy who purchased the majority of the vehicles, but this was soon to change with something that happened just two years before called Henry Ford's Model T Ford, built at a price so everybody could afford a car. This Mitchell dealership in the mid-teens shows the dealership buildings now using the second floor for the repair and the maintenance garage since more automobile owners were keeping their cars at their own homes. In 1915, with literally hundreds of makes of automobiles available, auto shows such as this were becoming huge and an overkill of elegance was obvious. Competition was fierce among the manufacturers. So still there were a few dealers, you had to go to auto shows to go and buy your cars. This building was not originally built as a church, but it was built as an unusual Cadillac dealership in the early 1920s. The little triangular building was their own gas station. And when the dealers sold and moved, well, you guessed it, now it became a church, and I suppose the gas station became the wedding chapel. There you go. This invoice, may have been written to a wealthy farmer in Charlotte, North Carolina. The address shows it as RFD, Rural Free Delivery. Cadillacs were popular among farmers making very good money. This one was a 1922 touring car, total price of $3,540, including a set of tire chains and 15 gallons of gasoline for $4.50. <laughs> $3,500, wow. This late 20s saw dealers building splendid structures in which to showcase their cars. This unusual combination of makes, Chrysler and Packard were in the same dealership, and this was to, they were to be unveiled with this invitation for the new dealership in 1928, complete with a 10-piece orchestra for the entertainment of the shoppers. Conversely, this small dealer, attempting to appear larger by exhibiting two cars, Yes, your eyes are okay. You see four cars, but two of them are painted on the back of the wall by the owner of the dealership to make